Good day, everyone. Neophyte DAG bringing you another message from the Breaking the Spells Caused by Shameless Lies series. This is part four. We're going to cover Henry Morgan. Yes, Henry Morgan the Pirate. Pirates of the Caribbean. We've seen the movies. Henry Morgan from Port Royal, Jamaica. That same one. Henry Morgan White Rum. That same one. Henry Morgan that plundered and pillaged the entire Spanish fleet in the Caribbean, that same one. But now we're going to cover Henry Morgan more in detail as to who he was and how his story relates to our story, giving us a better picture of what we need to know at this point in time that Henry Morgan had set in course of history for us to know at this time. And we're going to unmask a whole bunch of lies that has been told around Henry Morgan and come into the truth about who Henry Morgan was, who he is, and how all of that relate to us as fellow Jamaicans, fellow Caribbeans, fellows from the U.S., North America, South America as well. And as always, this series pulls from Job 9, verse 24. The wicked shall cover up the face of the judges. The wicked will paint over the faces of those who are important to your story and give it the likeness of a Caucasian person who is not part of that story. So that's what Job 9 deals with. Same thing as 1 Maccabees 3 verse 48. The wicked, again, will paint over the likeness of your prophets, your people, your book of truth into whatever they want you to think and putting themselves in that picture as the persons that are being talked about. But no, it's not. The book is talking about people of dark skin complexion, both Job and First Maccabees, dark skin people whose images will be painted over to look like a pale skin, fair skin person. That's what it deals with. And that's what we're going to keep our focus on when we go, go through these series. Two words that we're going to cover, which is very new. We'll come up with these new spell words that are being used because I want to point them out. So you, when you see them, immediately you can stop and just, OK, I need to check a little further to see what these words are talking about. One is sallow, one is nut brown. What is sallow, what is nut brown? We, can, we have an idea as to what nut brown is, but let's take a look at sallow. Having a yellowish color, a pale, sickly color, tinged with dark yellow. So it's a dark yellow, yellowish, dark yellow. That's what it really is. So someone who has a yellowish, dark yellow, that where the sallow comes in. We'll always go back to this chart right here. Always, I put it in for your reference. If you want to see what the words that are being used in books to describe Caucasian people versus dark-skinned people, these are the words that are thrown out. And sallow, I put that in the Swarthy section, the first column of the Swarthy section. But these are various words that you'll come across that is describing dark-skinned people, and I call them spell words because they give you a different word meaning and takes you away from the color, complexion meaning. So keep these words in mind when you see them. Stop and dig a little further to know who you're reading about or what you're reading about. We're going to cover today Sir Henry Morgan. He is the famous buccaneer pirate, uh, pirate of the Caribbean, pirate of Jamaica, Port Royal, all the stuff that we have heard. It's talking about Henry Morgan, and we're going to cover who Henry Morgan is. He was born in the Wales. He died in Jamaica. 1635 birth, 1688, that's when he died in Jamaica. This is the image that's given of him. If you go on the internet, you can easily pop this image up. See that he's a fair-skinned, pale-skinned person from this image. 
And typically in our mind, that's what we're thinking. He's a pale skinned person. Never crossed our mind that there might be something misleading about that, but we're gonna dig into it today. In order to understand what's going on with the pirates at that time, we're going to consult this book. It's called Jewish Pirates of the Caribbean, giving you a spoiler alert that a lot of the pirates is of Jewish religion origin. We'll go a little further into that, dig a little deeper. In this book, it talks about Morgan. It gives us a synopsis, a brief history of Morgan. And it says, Morgan was born on a farm in the Wales in 1635. So we know he's born a Welsh in Wales. Wales is part of the Britain Island itself. Britain Island has three countries on it. England, Wales, and Scotland. So he is part of that island of Britannia. He was born there. Let's see what happened. An adventurous youth, Morgan journeyed to Bristol. Bristol now is in England, then a major port for slave trade. So we know that Bristol, there's a lot of slave trade going on there. Why not in Africa, as we have been told? But let's start there. And soon found himself caught up in slavery, literally. Shanghai is a later term for what was referred to as Barbadoed. Whoa, Barbadoed. What significant does that have? The term was first Barbadoed, now they change it to Shanghai. Why? Because a country name was developed out of the word Barbadoed. The country of Barbados had its origin from that word Barbados. Why? Because the people in Barbados were those that were kidnapped and transported to a foreign land to be sold as indentured slave slash servants. What is an indentured slave slash servant? Someone who had to be a slave, serve a master for four to seven years and longer, depending on how what your servitude would be and if your master want to release you from that servitude. But that's how the term Barbadoed was originated, because you would have been kidnapped and transported. You wouldn't go off your own free will. Kidnapped. And they were taken to the island of Barbados, which came from the word Barbados, to show that that island is where we'll send you when we kidnap you. That was going on in Bristol and in other cities within England at that time. He was sold to an owner of a tobacco plantation, and he had to work on that plantation. That's what was happening from Bristol into Barbados. Then this continued when Jamaica was brought into the colony from Bristol to Jamaica. But we're gonna stay with Henry for now. He was first a slave in Barbados. He was kidnapped from Bristol as a slave sent to Barbados, which Barbados was the original place where all these kidnapped folks were sent. They were later joined by convicts at that particular point in time as also slaves. In case you're wondering how did Henry Morgan became free from his slavery in Barbados, and the answer is given on this page. In the middle of this page, Henry Morgan was given a promise of freedom if he joined the army. What army? There was an army that was being put together to take over Jamaica from Spain, and Henry Morgan joined that army. That's how we ended up in Jamaica, a free man, then later on becoming the leader of the pirates, the buccaneers, that took over the entire Caribbean from the Spanish and the Portuguese. And down below, I have identified Montefort and and Morgan, and the reason why they are a perfect pair to shape the island of Jamaica. So for the Jamaicans, I want you to recognize that name, stick a pin on it, Modiford, because it's going to be important in other messages that we do regarding Jamaica. But whatever Morgan is or come out to be from this message, Modiford is of the same complexion. That's the spoiler alert I'd wanted to give you so when I cover this later on, you won't be surprised. 
in order to understand what was going on with piracy in the Caribbean at Morgan's time, we have to understand these three events. And what are they? First, the expulsion of all the dark-skinned Jews who did not convert to Roman Catholic that were living in Spain at that time. In 1492, there was a, a law that was passed that said you had to get out of Spain if you're not going to convert to a Roman Catholic. Any of the dark-skinned Jews that were living there and did not want to convert had to flee. Where most of them went to? A lot of them went to Portugal. Portugal is right next door to Spain. Portugal in 1494 had its own laws for expelling dark-skinned Jews. Whether the ones who had migrated from Spain into Portugal or the ones that were living in Portugal before Spain had its expulsion, both were gathered up together and say, you had to convert to being a Roman Catholic or leave Portugal. The third event which started the first two events are the Spanish Inquisition and the Portuguese Inquisition. And what those are. These were formal hearings, trials, punishment, torture of people that were considered a threat to the Catholic control. You'll be called into a court, you know, and be tortured to confess your allegiance to being a Roman Catholic. Or if you're suspected of not being a Roman Catholic or trying to pretend to be a Roman Catholic, you'll be tortured as well. If they wanted to find out whether or not you're practicing another religion, you'll be called into the Inquisition as well. And they'll question you, they'll torture you until you give the truth. There were some really serious punishment that were being handed down by the Inquisitors to make sure that they find out whether you were lying about who you were and whether you are going to convert to being Roman Catholic. And if you were not converting to being a Roman Catholic, very likely you would be killed. So what the Inquisition was, is to make sure that the Roman Catholic control Spain, Portugal, and whatever colonies that they had in the Caribbean. And that's where now the pirates of the Caribbean, they come in. How do they come in? They were the actual resistance to Spain and Portugal control of the economics that was going on in the Caribbean. Those who were kicked out as part of the first event and the second event formed their own resistance in the countries that they sought refuge in. They gathered themselves up and went out into the Caribbean as a direct resistance to Spain and Portugal. Where did the expel dark-skinned Jew go for refuge? They went to France, which is right next to Spain, that's Spain's neighbor. They were invited into Netherlands, and they were invited into the kingdom of Britain, which is England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. Those countries took them in. Why did they take in the dark-skinned Jewish race? Because they were dark-skinned as well. People that were controlling those countries were dark-skinned, and they were helping out their other dark-skinned companions that were in need. The first book we'll read from is The Buccaneer King, written by Dudley Pope. And in this book, we're going to explore Morgan's color, his complexion. On page 13, it talks about his complexion. Henry Morgan, a sallow complexion, deeply tanned. That's how it describes him. Sallow, as from what the meaning that we had pulled out, a dark yellow, deeply tanned. This is the image that's on the internet of a sallow, deeply tanned person. Does this look like a sallow, deeply tanned person? The obvious answer is no. This is a image of a pale skin person. But this is the image that's being given to us of Henry Morgan. Clearly 
not a truthful image. We'll go to another book, Terror of the Spanish Main by Albert Marin. Let's see what this book has to say. This book goes into the description of Morgan. Sir Henry Morgan, a man of medium height, muscular build, he weighed about 175 pounds, had black hair reaching down to his shoulder, and had a nut brown complexion, and it throws in a little caveat in there for you, the result of many years in the tropics. Trying to throw you off. That is because he's in the tropics that he got this tan. But we won't let that sway us. We'll continue reading. Further along in that book, goes into the same description again. He's a man, medium height, muscular build, wears his black shoulder length hair, not brown complexion. Now it left off the little disclaimer that it's because he's in the tropics. And it added another description, gold rings dangled from his ears. He had gold earrings, just like what we do today as guys. We put earrings in our ears. Henry Morgan had that. Take a mental note of that, because this is going to come back to be very important to identifying who Morgan really is. Does this image have a nut brown complexion and black hair? This is what's given to us as Morgan, a shameless lie. Does not have black hair, doesn't have a nut brown complexion. This is a fair skin complexion. Another shameless lie image. Go to another book, Sir Henry Morgan, Buccaneer by Ronald Simi. In this book, another description given of Morgan on page 10. Morgan, and he describes him, is dark face. The hard recklessness of his dark face was rendered less ferocious by wide set imaginative eyes. He's talking about his face, not the image that he's in, meaning he, he looks very angry and dark. No, but the complexion of his face. Image by Britannica. Someone went way out of their way to lighten this image, increase the exposure on this image to bring out the whiteness, their version of whiteness, the Caucasian features of this image. But I'm asking you, does this person have a dark face complexion? Clearly your answer is going to be no, this doesn't have a dark face complexion. The image would have to be much darker. But this is what Britannica is showing as an image of Henry Morgan. We'll go to another book. Sir Henry Morgan Buccaneer. This is volume one of that book. Now, in this book, it's talking about Mandeville and Morgan. These are two people. Mandeville was a person that would always get under Morgan's skin because Mandeville know the true history of Morgan, you know, where he's from. If putting it in our own Jamaican way, we know about you, we know where you're from. So you can't lie to me. So going back to what Mandeville was doing, because these were two people from Jamaica, Mandeville by which to annoy Morgan was always speaking of Morgan as the convict Negro driver. What does that mean? It goes back to Barbadoed slash Shanghai. Convicts were being Barbadoed from Bristol into Barbados. Morgan was off that, because he was Barbadoed, to Barbados. And Mandeville knew about it. So he would jeer him, tease him, get under his skin, saying, you're one of the convict Negro driver. Now, Negro, would you call a Caucasian person a Negro in that tease? No. Meaning Morgan had to be of Negro complexion in order to fit that teasing, that jeering that he was getting from Mandeville. Morgan was a Negro. He was part of that convict kidnapping that was going on in Bristol. 
all the way to Barbados, which is Barbadoed, where people were Barbadoed. That's where the name comes from. Let's find out some more about slave driver. Let's read from this. An enslaved black man, a driver promoted to the position by his master. So two things we find out here from this. In order to be a slave driver, you had to be a black man and you had to be a slave yourself and your master gave you that position. The two description fits Morgan perfectly. He's a black, dark-skinned man and he's a slave himself. So he fits those two. So the tease that Mandeville was doing to Morgan is is in order because you fit the two description. However, Morgan did not like that tease. If you look throughout this entire description that's given of a driver, you see the repeating theme, black driver, black driver, black slave driver. So it's clear that to be a driver, a slave driver, you had to be a dark skinned person, a black person, a Negro person. Mandeville didn't stop there. So Mandeville, one day when he was drunk, before several other people, other gentlemen, reminded Morgan that he would carry to his grave, Morgan would carry to his grave, the scar upon his forehead, the evidence of his slavery. Whoa, Morgan was a slave. We know that. But well, what scar is he talking about? This is the scar. Whenever you were brought to Barbados or any British colony, as a slave, you were branded with your owner's initial. So whatever the initial of your owner was, it was branded on you, either your forehead or on your chest area for men and for women on your breast area. Morgan had his branding on his forehead. So the brand is to make sure that if you're trying to pass off as a free person, the branding will be there to identify you as a slave. And then secondly, it will have the initial of the owner in case there's any confusion about who owns you. The brand will be there to show that you're owned by this person. If the person name was John Doe, it will it'll be a JD printed on you. So anyone sees you know that a JD initial person owned you. Morgan had that on him, on his forehead. So Mandeville will always tease him about that. And Mandeville mentioned it when other gentlemen were there. Very likely Morgan had his hat covering his, his scar on his forehead, but Mandeville would bring it out so other people would know. So two things we've gathered from this. Morgan was a Negro driver, meaning he was driving something in the fields the tobacco fields that he was working. And what was Morgan driving? He was driving other slaves that were working in the field. A slave driver is a policeman of the field. He enforces discipline and guarantee performance of the other slaves that were working in the field. And that was the position that Morgan was occupying at that time when he was Barbadoed to Barbados. And if you go to the actual descriptions given by former slaves of what a slave driver looked like, they describe a slave driver as a big colored man, a large, tall black man. So it's clear that Morgan, if he's a slave driver, is of that description as well. A big colored man, a large, tall black man, which goes back to Mandeville T's that Morgan, a Negro slave driver, Negro is the description given for a dark-skinned person, a black person. It is clear that Morgan was a slave that was put in charge of other slaves from the description that Mandeville gave him and from the T's. And then secondly, he was branded with the mark of his owner. Two things that are tied in with Negro and slavery. Let's get back to this guy that we put up at the beginning. Does this guy fit the description, the complexion of a Negro slave? The answer is definitely not. 
does not look like a Negro slave. Not at all. But again, pointing out to you that the image that you get doesn't tie into what you read about the person. And we have to read and find knowledge about the people that we are coming across as that are important to our country, whether it is Jamaica, Barbados, St. Lucia, Antigua, Guyana, and definitely for North America, the United States, because a lot of what is tied in with Morgan also occurred in Virginia. It also occurred in South Carolina. It also occurred in Massachusetts. It also occurred in New York. It's all over the coastal area of North America. What happened to Morgan? It's a similar history for the people that are on those parts of America and in those other British islands in the Caribbean. But definitely coming back to this, this doesn't look like a Negro slave. Let's see what Morgan will very likely, or more than likely, will look like. Not saying that's the true image of him, but very likely because of the skin tone, the skin complexion that we have read that Morgan has. Taken from the book, The Buccaneer King, this is the image given on the cover of it, more truthful to his complexion than all the other pale skin, fair skin, florid skin images that we have seen. A dark skin complexion, Henry Morgan, which he was of. The other book that we covered, Sir Henry Morgan, a dark skin complexion image of Henry Morgan, which brings us to my favorite section here where we're running comparisons of truth versus shameless lies. The image on the left is more likely to be a true description of Morgan's complexion versus the one on the right, the shameless lie, which the exposure was turned up high enough to make the image look of a pale skin, fair skin person. A shameless attempt to bring us a Caucasian image of Henry Morgan when he was, in fact, a dark skin complexion person. Our second image, same image, that's in the collection of the British Museum. On the left, it's an image. The tone was darkened down. The image on the right, it was lightened. The same image but British Museum is giving you both. I call it the cover your ass method, meaning if it turns out that the truth, it was of a dark skin complexion person, then hey, I, I gave you that dark skin picture. And then to maintain the current lie that Morgan is a pale skin, hey, I'm giving you a lighter picture. You get the best of both worlds. That's the only thing I can come up with that you'll have the same image given in two different shadings. Same image that was given to us by the British Museum, but this time now the artists got creative. On the left, it's a darker complexion shading of that image. Dark black hair, as we have read that Morgan has dark black hair. And then on the right, that's the shameless lie image, pale skin, fair skin with blonde hair. If you look, you see both artists had some creativity in coloring the jacket and the sash over his shoulder. One artist went with a brownish burnt orange and a purple sash with a black and white tie, while the other artist went with a gold jacket, reddish vest, with a gold necktie to go with it to match the blonde hair. Artists got creative, but what I'm bringing you back to, if I'm going by the facial descriptions given to me in by various sources, dark skin, black hair, I would go with the image on the left. And the image on the right, I will toss that out the window immediately. He's not fair skin. He doesn't have the blonde hair. 
Another comparison going back to that shameless lie image. On the right with the blonde deer, pale, fair skin, comparing it to the book cover, which is of dark skin complexion. That's on the left. That's Henry Morgan. He was of a dark skin complexion. Now some spoiler alerts. We're going to go to family names and crests of families that were living in England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. They lived there. They got together, formed their own family crest to identify and signify and to recognize that they were indigenous to those countries. They were born there, they lived there, and they were there before others showed up and pushed them out, took their history, whitewashed it, and hid it. And the reason why I'm going to this, I'm going back to the gold rings that were dangling from the ears of Sir Henry Morgan. What's the significance of that? And I'm going to show you what that is. I'm going to give you examples of dark-skinned people that were living and originally from Ireland, England, Scotland, and Wales that had rings in their ears, or rings dangling from their ears. And to find these people, you have to go to Fairbairn's Book of Crest of the Families of Great Britain, which is Scotland, Wales, and England, and Ireland. You gotta go to this book. Volume two of this book gives you the crests. Volume one gives you the family names that are associated with those crests. In another message, I'll walk you through volume one to give you the names, but I'm gonna stay with volume two for this one to give you the images of the crest of those families. And here is the image of the crest. In plate number 182, that's the crest with a dark-skinned woman with rings in her ears. And we're going to say yeah, it's very common for women to be wearing rings in their ears. Doesn't say much about men wearing ears. That's why I throw in plate number 192 of a man with a ring in his ears, which is the family crest of a family that lived in England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. These families were there. They made their crests, and it was worthy enough, popular enough, to make its way into Fairbairn's book of family names in England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. These two families were there. They're of dark skin complexion. Clearly, from these images, these are not fair skin, pale skin, florid skin, complexion or families that originally had those names. Dark skin, no denying that. Doesn't stop there. In that same book, plate number 240, item 12, plate number 281, item 6, dark skin complexion people that were of great families in England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales that had rings in their ears. That's why I brought you back to Morgan had a ring in his ears. He's Negro, he's part of these families. It's nothing new for them to wear rings in their ears in those countries because it's part of their family heritage as depicted in their crest. What is a crest? It's the badge of that family. Someone sees that crest, it identifies that family immediately that's associated with that crest. On the right-hand side, clearly that's a man with ring in his ears. So we can't say, hey, the other pictures, it's, it's debatable whether it's a woman or a man. Because in plate 281, it's clearly a man, you look by the side, you'll see his rings in his ears. So what I'm trying to tell you, there were original families, the original families that were in England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. And yes, 
They were dark-skinned people. They were there before the fair-skinned, pale-skinned, florid-complexion-skinned people arrived in England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. That's the spoiler alert. We'll cover that more in future messages because if I tell you that's it, I have to be able to prove it. I've proved it with the image, but I have to be able to prove it even more to you, and I will do that. But for now, what I'd wanted to point out to you is that there were dark-skinned people living in England, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. They wore rings in their ears, and they were being taken from those four countries as Negro slaves, Barbadoed to Barbados, and then later on Barbadoed to Jamaica, to Montserrat, to Antigua, to uh, Guyana, and all the other British colonies that were there. With that, I am going to bring this message to a close that we're going to break the spell that has been cast on us, spell of lies, that our history doesn't exist, spell of lies, that those who are being portrayed now as these great people were in fact Caucasians when it's not. Most of it is whitewashed, and you'll see as these messages continue that there are dark-skinned people that created all the history that you currently know of. You just didn't know that there were dark skin. So we're going to break the spell. It's going to be broken. The more you read, the more you dig into details, and the more you start questioning things, that's when you'll identify who the true people that the history are talking about it's really your history, not his story. I'll bring this to a close. And as always, have a wonderful and pleasant day.